thought I was in Nazi Germany yesterday. I went upstairs and Trump was talking downstairs and the crowd was cheering him on. And he was, uh, <laughs> I was listening from upstairs in the balcony and I'm hearing this crowd cheering and I'm saying, wait a minute, this is what happened. <laughs> this is what Hitler did, you know. <laughs> Get everybody riled up. Get rid of the chancellor. <laughs> yeah, I know, and part of it's not funny. <laughs> But see, people are very dedicated to uh, to whatever he was selling, you know. I mean, they want to buy what he's selling. And uh, frankly, he's selling himself. Let me get over here. Okay. <laughs> hiya, hiya. <laughs> okay, the Trump thing. I don't want to talk too much about it because then you're going to think I'm trying to be political, which I am. <laughs> I like to be political like George Carlin, you know, and watch the foolishness of it all. Hey, never mind their foolishness. How about mine? <laughs> My foolishness is better than your foolishness. <laughs> no, I don't have any uh, uh, attack on my belief system right now because I don't trust any of them. <laughs> I trust them uh, to run for office and for me to uh, uh, have to raise my family. See, you know, the truth of the matter is that uh, I'm getting older and I'm going to die and the only thing is that nobody wants to pay for my funeral so i'm staying alive a lot longer and what's this about bruce springsteen's on broadway what is this the uh, phantom of freehold no you know i mean this is not exactly the lay miz to watch a guy uh, tell his life story with a guitar <laughs> i could sit there with my accordion and do the same thing you know and open on broadway of course broadway for me would be uh, the other side of broadway the place where I used to park my car, <laughs> not on a theater stage. But, you know, they got a lot of money riding on Broadway, and people want to open up again. I wonder if it was a full house, if they wore masks, if there was separation. You know, meanwhile, we're at church gagging on, on uh, the sermons and the masks and the indecision and also, of course, praying for those who are uh, lost in the, uh, the families of those who are lost in the rubble. I've been through this already with 9-11, of course. We had a, a, a video... 20 years ago will be the anniversary on September of this 11th, this September 11th. The video was shot by Art Volo, and it was so well done that it won awards, but it was so hard to watch that during a presentation at a civic event, they asked him to not show the whole thing. And we, so now, you know, it's 20 years later, and he's revising it and putting stuff in there that was left out before. And I was on the air during that time. You know, I was prominently placed... Uh, on, uh, on the number one station for talk. And uh, we did a great deal, you know, of, of uh, I think we did a great deal of healing. Uh, I had a partner with uh, Dr. Joy Brown, therapist. She passed away, you know, I was surprised because we did a lot of things together. She was young, that's why I'm surprised. Uh, we did a lot of things together, the March of Dimes, um, going from one top of Manhattan to the other, to the bottom uh, to raise money. Uh, we were there for the blackout, that blackout. Everybody got along during that blackout, except when the mayor showed up. Isn't that, isn't that interesting? Bloomberg, I, I happen to like him, but, you know, I, I, I don't like the, the bike lane, I call it, the bike lanes. But I, but I like him. He's a good manager. And when, when uh, everything was cool, I mean, all the lights were out. We had a, a night of peace. Nobody robbed anybody. Nobody killed anyone. It was unbelievable how we all got along without uh, having any incidents until the next day when the mayor went across the Brooklyn Bridge and a crowd followed him. So that commotion of bringing people together like that, of, of demonstration, they called it, that stirred people up because it got our, our adrenaline going. You know, right now what we have going with this uh, uh, community effort in Miami, we are shut down on emotions much of the times, but not now because... This was like 9-11 in this regard. 9-11 was terrorism. But in 9-11, everybody knew somebody, but there were millions of people in the city of New York and, uh, and, and in the building, thousands. So in the two buildings. So here we have uh, an apartment dwelling that's a little bit, uh, uh, it's not, it's, it, it did not come, it came from nature. And poor construction, probably, they, they're figuring that out. But you know, the first thing to come in there is FEMA. Uh, usually, that's the organization that was started by the government to give relief to families. The second group that moves in is lawyers, and they all move in, and they're, they're the fault-finding committee. But we're still in the first part of it, which is to look for bodies. It's five days now. 
very unlikely that people would be alive, so they're beginning to talk about closure. Uh, and that means that we all have to get together and, uh, and realize that we have lost a loved one or loved ones, and we have to sit down and think about our fatalities and also our own, in my case, I think about my own uh, uh, life. You know, I meditate on that and wonder, gee, what did I do that's right? What did I do that's wrong? Good time for, for self-analysis, you know. And uh, it doesn't hurt to have a therapist either, but or a group that works with you. But but this is a this is knowing someone in the building or being related to someone, or there go I, but for the grace of God, like Michael Imperioli, uh, his wife was two buildings away during this. Uh, built by the same builder, I think. There were three buildings that were built by the same guy at the same time in the 80s. And uh, Michael had an apartment in the building that went down. And he knew some of the people. You know, he was neighbors. He, he shared that with me. I don't know if he minds my talking about it on the air here. But he's a wonderful guy and a good heart. And also, he's a very, very metaphysical. You know, he believes in the divine. And uh, he has a sense of... Uh, of doing things that are quite wonderful, including he said the rosary of Mother Teresa in Italy years ago. So I don't know. I mean, you know, we got you never know who you're dealing with. Uh, look at Anthony Hopkins on the celebrity level, a great sober guy. I used to go to the meetings with him years ago. I think I can say that because we both are out of the closet on sobriety. Um, he is a wonderful example of someone who can carry a strong message of how good it is to be sober and how wonderful it is to be clean and how good it is to give away what you have. That's the 12th step in the uh, uh, program, incidentally, of AA. It's uh, giving it away to keep it. You gotta give it away to keep it. Now, if, if some of our people uh, who are having struggles with relationships or with sexual addictions, uh, people who are having trouble with, the, with any, any addiction, I, mine is shopping, I love to shop, uh, and I love food, you know. I mean, we, we all have something. It usually is it's ironic I bring this up that when you get sober you you find another something that you that you got I thought when I I, I was sober and clean that I would be uh, uh, take a free pass but then I realized wait a minute I got another addiction I'm an overeater I want to eat too much <laughs> then I got into the uh, Bikram yoga and I became an exercise freak you know 28 years of doing the Bikram yoga uh, I don't think uh, this life, this life is a rehearsal. And you know, Cassius Clay's daughter, Muhammad Ali, he called himself, uh, May May, he has, he has several kids. And May May was one of his daughters, the, the other, Layla, I think is the, she's the boxer. But, but May May was a poet, and she was working on a, a record career. And I helped her with it, back with the Scotty brothers in the, I think it was the 80s. But you know, I, I mean, it, it all melts together. I've done a lot of things, so I don't, I don't have dates on them. Uh, but, but I do, I do remember certain things because of the timeline based on a holiday or, or something that's significant, like 9/11. I mean, I'm never going to forget that. Anyway, May May, who was writing poetry, Cassius Clay's daughter. Let me go back to the issue for Scotty Brothers making a record career. She said, you know, life is a test, and uh, and that's all it is. That that was her poetry. It was. This is all a rehearsal. It's a test for, uh, for, for the spirit. And, and when we pass the test, see the problem, the problem that I'm having, I don't know where we're going when we graduate. I'm gonna wear that cap and gown and then I'm gonna be lost, you know. I'm a political atheist. I hope I'm not uh, uh, out of line for the, for the divine power, for the higher power. And you know, everybody's got their own belief system. You don't pick one. You come into the world without one. Uh, and nobody really picks a family, a religion, a race, a height. You don't you don't pick any of this stuff. You just come in. And you got what you got. And when you come in for about a six, seven years, then you've got to work with uh, whoever is running the, the game uh, or the household or the family. And then you, after that, you start to figure a little bit out and break away from it when you're a teenager. I, unfortunately, teenagers begin at 10, teen, and, nine, and, and 11 years old now. Uh, but but it's okay. I mean, you know, kids uh, learn to have relationships, and there you go. Now you got it. The beginning of it is a relationship. The one that I have with myself is the one that I come to eventually. And then the one where we have the biggest problem with, which is right now, for instance, losing loved ones is letting go. There's a saying in the 12-step meetings, let go and let God. There are those who are atheists, and they are still sober and clean. They don't need to have God. They have a higher power. Uh, it's a description that you give yourself. 
Uh, so, you know, this is a gift. All of this is a gift. Life itself is a test. It is a gift. And we, we do have all of these things to do that we choose later on. And the choices we have to live with, oh boy. You know, I've made some uh, interesting choices, that's for sure. Bad ones too. Uh, but I made some good ones. Hey, you know, we don't celebrate the good ones easily if we want to punish ourselves and beat ourselves with our one free hand. And then in the end, you know, we're going to find out that somewhere along the line, all we had to do was smile and, and give out love because that's, that's my idea of God. God is love. So uh, just in case you're trying to figure this out, you know, it's a, jo a Joey talk. I don't need a TED talk to be motivated. I'm highly motivated, usually motivated by poverty and motivated by failure. Hey, I'll tell you something. I've got, I've got a different kind of a lifestyle right now. Uh, the pandemic, my age, uh, I think also in my personal journey, uh, helping others and working with others is a joy. That's where I get the most pleasure. I have my health. Thank God I have a great, uh, or thank the divine. I thank the higher power. I have a wonderful doctor. I have uh, Matt, Mark Siegel, you know, who's on Fox. Uh, I don't know if you've seen him on TV, but I think he introduced the world to Dr. Fauci. You know, but not everybody likes Fauci. Not everybody agrees. But the fact of the matter is we've got the guy there, and we do are wearing masks, and we are separated, and we do have vaccine. Now, you know, someone said to me yesterday, I was complaining about the, the rally with Trump in Ohio uh, uh, sounding like, uh, like a, a German Nazi camp. And he said, uh, you know, he started the, the vaccine ball rolling, so you got to give him credit. See, not everything that someone does is all, so, no one's all bad. And no one's all good. <laughs> That's the other part. Uh, and, you know, uh, God spelled with one O and good is spelled with two. And, then, and, and God spelled backwards is dog. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? I, I just thought I'd throw that in because we don't have Alex Trebek anymore and I don't have to be correct with my trivia. So there. That's the only reason why I'm still here and able to get away with what I get away with is because Alex has gone to correct me. Even the bird doesn't agree with me anymore. She's tired of my tweets. It's uh, <laughs> time to go. It's a Reynolds wrap.